If you would like to stand and sing, you're welcome to do so. It's called Today I Choose in your blue sheet inside of your program. What do I want my day to be? I choose. What do I want to feel today? I choose. I love this. Yeah, sing along with me. Why not? What do I want to say today? I choose. I choose. I choose. I choose. Today, I choose to be grateful. So great. She's good. <laughs> All right, so my name is Kathy. And on behalf of Reverend Donna Maurer and the Board of Trustees, I am privileged to welcome you to the Sonoran Desert Center of Spiritual Living. This is such a good place. Whoever you are and wherever you are on the spiritual path, you are truly welcome here. You will be validated, supported, and encouraged to be all that you are meant to be. Our vision statement is love in action every day, in every way. And we express this love by learning and living the principles of the science of mind. You'll find our declaration of principles at the back of your program. So please join me now in reading them. I believe there is an intelligence operating throughout the universe. I believe this intelligent power is only good. I believe this intelligence expresses as me. I believe through my conscious use of this power, I create my life as happy, healthy, and complete. And so it is. So, if this is your first time here, we especially welcome you and then, and thank you for your interest and curiosity. Anybody here for the first time? Hmm. <laughs> and I'd like to thank those that are helping here so much because we have so many really, really good ones. Susan. Wanda, Doug, Gray, John, Don, so many, so many. And uh, we're just so lucky, Loma, really. 
We're so lucky to have so many good people here that are helping. Reverend Donna, John, yeah. So anyway, and Melinda. <laughs> so please direct your attention to the announcements in your bulletin. And if you're watching us online, please visit cslaz.org for our announcements and events calendar. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. It's nice to be with you today. Uh, we are open for a prayer request over at the prayer table. And uh, I just want you all to know that Rosie is recuperating very well, getting stronger every day. And we have a card on the counter if you would like to sign it for her. That would be very nice. And um, so for our invocation, Relax into the knowing. This is the time, this is the place of divine resonance. Breathe in peace, comfort, and joy. Allow your essence to accept the love here as you receive and project. Let us celebrate the oneness that our knowing brings. Let us be grateful for this morning, for each and every soul, for the practitioners, for Reverend Donna, and for her message. Namaste. So it is. My sharing this morning is from Emmett Fox, who happens to be the author of the Sermon on the Mount. And the name of the talk is, bless you. <laughs> All things be ready if our minds be so. This is one of the greatest statements of spiritual law ever made. Even in the pages of the Bible itself, there is no clearer or more definite guidance in the art of living. Shakespeare here gives us a complete statement of metaphysical truth. Every student of this science should write it in letters of fire, 
upon his heart. It is the door of freedom and the Jacob's ladder between earth and heaven. There's nothing in the universe that you cannot do or be if you are mentally ready. People speak of golden opportunities, but we, what we call opportunity is really one's own mental readiness. Napoleon said, opportunities? I make opportunities. And while this would be merely a vainglorious boast for one who is not on a spiritual basis, yet when you do understand the truth of being, it is simply a statement of fact. The Romans could have had the telephone. The Greeks could have had the cinema. The Babylonians could have had an automobile had they been mentally ready. The laws of nature were the same in those ages as they are in ours. The same materials were in the ground. But the minds of the ancients were not ready for those things and so they went without them. We say in metaphysics that demand and supply are one. And it's equally true that supply and demand are one also. Supply the necessary mental condition and the demand, the opportunity, or the occasion will prevent present itself automatically. Whenever you are ready, you will find that everything else is ready too. Namaste. And I light this candle in preparation for holding the high watch, seeing the absolute best for each and every one here. Thank you. in times of trouble Mother Mary comes to me speaking words of wisdom let it be and in my hour of darkness she is standing right in front of me speaking words of wisdom let it be let it be let it be let it be, let it be Whisper words of wisdom Let it be When the broken hearted people Living in the world agree There will be an answer Let it be For though they may be parted There is still a chance that they may see There will be an answer Let it be Let it be Let it be Let it be Let it be, let it be, let it be, let it be, just let it be. Whisper words of wisdom, let it be.
is clouded There is still a light that shines on me Shine till tomorrow, let it be Wake up to the sound of music Mother Mary comes to me Speaking words of wisdom Let it be 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 There will be an answer Let it be 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 There will be an answer Let it be Let it be, let it be, let it be, whisper words of wisdom, let it be, let it be. Good morning. Good morning. Let me get things together a bit because that is our topic. Obviously, let it be, or let there be. Um, but I want to begin. I want to begin this morning by um, just acknowledging the two very special people that we lost in the last couple of weeks. I did mention Betty White in the E News, and. Um, you know, one of the things that, that's going around everywhere is that nobody, they cannot find anybody that didn't love Betty White. <laughs> and, and it was so sweet because the Green Valley News posted a cartoon in the editorial that said, it says so much about your legacy if people think you died too soon at 99. <laughs> Um, so it does say so much about her and her life and the causes that she stood for, just about everything. And then, of course, we just lost Sidney Poitier. And uh, here, he, he's so full of firsts in, in so many ways, not only as an actor, but as an activist. He paved the way for, for the black community to have roles of dignity. And, um, and it was cute. I, I saw an interview with him, and he said he was kicked out of acting school because he had a, a, um, uh, an accent and because he was tone deaf. So um, we are the recipients of his tenacity. <laughs> so I just I want to pay tribute to those two people because they gave us so much. Um, even though our, our, ta our theme this month is ordinary wonders and they're extraordinary people, so we can kind of scooch back into the idea of ordinary wonders. Um, because I do want us to focus on that all this month. There are so many ordinary wonders all around us. It is the little things, the everyday miracles um, that are all around us if we keep an open heart. You know, just the, the, uh, the sweetness, there was a, there was a Kodamundi picture in the, in the paper last Wednesday, and John and I just ooed over. It was so sweet, you know, because <laughs> you don't see those very often. We were lucky to see a few um, in real life, but that's a little miracle, and we take things like that for granted. Um, take a lot of things for you. you know, this morning, I had a, a, I don't know, what is it called when, when, you're, when you can't move your thumb? I mean, it just it just froze like this. <laughs> I said, oh my goodness! And I had a horrible time. And you think, how many times do you give thanks for your thumb? You know, and and yet it's a miracle. It's a miracle that <laughs> we've got these things that work for us, <laughs> and we don't notice it until they stop working. So. Um, Anyway, so we keep an open heart and look at these ordinary miracles that are ordinary wonders that are all around us. And I chose as my topic this morning, let there be. 
And it was inspired by a statement by Eric Butterworth from his book, The Creative Life. And he says, the creation story is built on a prayerful phrase, let there be. Not there will be, or dear God, make it be. There was no suggestion of effort, strain, or anxiety. Just letting. The kingdom that is within us is a finished kingdom. And that for which we pray is done even before we ask. When I read that, I was struck by its simplicity and also its profoundness. You know, <laughs> as, as, a, as a spiritual leader, you know, you, you read and read and read and read and read. And then every once in a while, I tell my class, every, every once in a while you have this cosmic plop for everything that you thought you knew. It moves from the head to the heart. And I call that a cosmic plot. I remember Rosie and I talking about it one time because she was ready to throw the science of mind textbook out the window. She said, he has said this over and over and over, and all of a sudden she stopped. And she said, oh my God. <laughs> Heard it a thousand times, but it went from here to here. And it's a whole new meaning that doesn't have a, it doesn't have a language that we can talk about, but we can feel it together. Um, so that's our creation story. There are creation stories that have chaos, that have fights, that have wars. Our creation story, let there be. No effort, no wins, no losses. And God says, let there be, not about a statement something for something concrete, but a letting of all that God is be a part of its creation. So we look at, we look at the, the story in Genesis, and we say, and God created the earth, and God created this, and so we're looking at tangible things. But if you think about it, we're also looking at those intangibles because God said, let there be light, and there was light. But the sun and the moon had not been created yet. So what light are we talking about? Not the sun, not the moon, not the stars. We are talking about illumination, the idea that God is all there is. And when we turn to that, let there be, then there is, and God says, and it is good. What a simple way to live our lives. Let there be, God says yes, and here we are. How simple, how simple. So let there be as an idea uh, in the mind of God and an idea within me. And because it's God's idea, it's good and very good. It can't be anything else. So as I read that, as I kind of pondered on it, um, the idea of Deepak Chopra's effortless ease it came to mind because uh, he, uh, Deepak says, if you observe nature at work, you will see that the least effort is expended. Grass doesn't try to grow, it grows. Fish don't try to swim, they swim. Flowers don't try to bloom, they bloom. Birds don't try to fly, they fly. This is their intrinsic nature. The earth doesn't try to spin on its own axis. It is the nature of the earth to spin with dizzying speed and to hurtle through space. It's the nature of babies to be in bliss. It's the nature of the sun to shine. It's the nature of the stars to glitter and sparkle. So for you and me then, <clears throat> our intrinsic nature is to express those qualities of love, joy, harmony, peace, 
creativity. That's our true nature because it's God's nature. And when we express that true nature, we can do nothing but live from that place of effortless ease, no matter what is going on around us. But we will never get there by trying to make it happen. And how often do we do that? <laughs> I have a friend who said, we don't have to make it happen, we have to make it welcome. And I think that that's an important thing to remain, because as long as we're trying to make something happen, what we're doing is putting effort and we're setting up roadblocks and the universe has to say yes to that because the universe can only say yes. So what are we doing? What are we doing? Let there be and there was and it is good and very good. How simple, how simple. So when you and I meditate or sit in the quiet with the intention of quieting our ego mind, we are putting ourselves in alignment with the same intrinsic creativity that nature uses. You know, if we take a look at the ocean or a lake on a windy day, we see the turbulent waves. But if we dive beneath the surface, surface we find incredible serenity and peace. No waves only the stillness of the deep water. So when we meditate, we are diving deep beneath our outer ego world into that place of complete and pure serenity. And it's here that all creativity resides. In the stillness is where the creative process is generated. And it's also where the organization of that creativity takes place. In other words, all of the preliminary action necessary for us to live joyfully and harmoniously, harmoniously come from a quiet mind. When we are in meditation, when we allow our monkey mind to slow down, we are allowing universal mind to do its organizing work. And that's when we're in touch with our infinite self, when we are one with spirit, when we are one with the intrinsic flow of life. T.S. Eliot says, at the still point of the turning world, there the dance is, except for the point, the still point, there would be no dance, and there is only the dance. So the delivery and doing then comes from the body, the mind, as it processes our experiences and takes action in our world of affairs. This is the dance that we see but for us to be in perfect rhythm, we must have begun at the still point. And when we don't allow for that quiet time, then we're gonna process our experiences from the surface world of the ego. And like the wind-blown lake or ocean, our experiences will reflect turbulence of the material world rather than the serenity of the spiritual realm. And that's, what, that's simply just what we mean by let go and let God. We let go of all the ways that we think things should be, of all the things we think we should be doing, and simply become an open and receptive vehicle through which universal mind can operate without hindrance. Deepak Chopra says, attention to the ego consumes the greatest amount of energy. When our internal reference point is the ego, when we seek power and control over other people or seek approval from others, we spend energy in a wasteful way. When we are in touch with the source, then we've harnessed that power of love and the creative energy of the universe automatically expresses as that love through us. So as we begin to embody the sacredness of everything, then we find that both our thought and our experiences reflect that sense of the divine. There is a Sufi story of a master and his student 
And so the master gives his student a puzzle. You are walking by a house when five big dogs come out to attack you. What will you do? The student thought and said, I would run very fast. No, replies the master, the dogs are faster than you. They will surely attack you. Well, then I would pick up a stick and hit them, says the student. That would not do, says the master, for you would only be able to hit one or two. The rest would attack you. Finally, the perplexed student gives up. What should I do? The master says, if you will call for the owner of the dogs, the owner will come out and call them all off and you will be safe. And I think that that's what happens when we stay close to the sacred. Rather than looking at one negative thought and then the next and fixing them one by one, we call upon that inner source and wisdom to transform everything in our life to the attributes of God. We have inherent in us those spiritual qualities that allow us to live outside the box of physical limitations that allow us to be in this world but not of it. So much of the time we don't pray or commune with our inner spiritual nature until we have a problem. We have a health challenge, we ask for prayer. We have a financial problem, we ask for prayer. We have a relationship problem, we ask for prayer. And there's nothing wrong with that because having faith that things can be healed has got to be our first step in our spiritual growth. But again, it's kind of like calling those dogs off one at a time. A lot of energy and effort is wasted when we try to heal one problem at a time. And as we go deeper so that our whole nature becomes line, aligned with the truth of who we are, then we find we don't have to confront the dogs one at a time. And here's the real key. We don't have to confront them at all. They become docile when the owner is present. If we stand with that source, those problems and challenges become docile in the presence of spirit. As you and I realize that we are standing on holy ground, that all is sacred, that ultimately we will find that there will be less need to pray for individual challenges because they have been transmuted into blessings. And our prayers then are less about having our needs met and take the form of thanksgiving for the gifts that we receive every minute of the day, those ordinary wonders. We have within us infinite capacity to love, to create, to learn, and to live fully. And if we stay close to all that is sacred and holy, we find that we are more easily expressing those ways in which we live to our fullest. We find a greater strength within because we trust in the source of our being. A boy and his dad were hiking together on a familiar path and as they made a sharp turn in a narrow section of the path, they came across a big rock blocking the path. The little boy asked his father, do you think I can move it? His dad said, why, of course, if you use all of your strings, <coughs> I'm sure you can move it. Uh -oh. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, the little boy chose an angle of attack on the big rock and began pushing with everything he had. He grunted and groaned, and summoning all the strength he had, he pushed and pushed and pushed, but to no avail. Finally, in desperation, he said, you were wrong, Dad, I just can't do it. The dad looked him in the eyes and smiled and said, no, son, 
You haven't used all your strength yet. I'm right here, and you haven't asked me to help you. I think you and I are seeking a sense of oneness with life, a sense of peace and serenity in our relationships within ourselves and with others, a sense of security that far outweighs what we have in the bank or in investments, the sense of joy that is not dependent upon external experiences. I think we all want that strength to move big rocks and mountains. But what we don't realize that what we are seeking is already ours. Like the little fish, we keep swimming around looking for this thing that somebody told us was water. Dr. Holmes says we cannot doubt that the spirit has already made the gift because we live. Ours is the privilege of acceptance. Thus we are to assume the attitude of a grateful beneficiary of the divine gifts. And this should be done simply and directly. The spirit is not something that was or that is going to be or become. While it is infinite in scope, it also exists at the very corner of our being. You and I are here. I love what Kathy said this morning. We're family. We're here. And we're here to love. We're here to share in the beauty and the glory of spirit through each other. These are really the gifts of life itself. And you and I are each a vehicle through which life's gifts are expressed in the world. It's a brand new year. There's a lot on the horizon. But may we simply remember, let there be, and it is good. Namaste. If you would like to stand and sing, you are welcome to do so.
Thank you, Ricky Byers, too. So it's time for our offering. Um, and it seems like every Sunday when I'm here, I, I, I just want to thank you for your generosity and for allowing us to be a beneficial presence in this community. I thank you so very, very, very much. Um, so won't you join me in the offering affirmation? My gift goes forth to heal, prosper, and bless all that it touches. It is evidence of my conviction that God is the source and substance of my supply. I share generously of my good, knowing that it returns to me multiplied abundantly, and so it is. Thank you for this day, Spirit. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this day, Spirit. Thank you for this day. This healing, this beautiful, yeah, beautiful day. This beautiful, this beautiful, this beautiful day. Thank you for this day, Spirit. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this day, Spirit. Thank you for this day. This beautiful, this beautiful. This beautiful day, this beautiful, this beautiful, this beautiful day. Thank you for my friends, Spirit. Thank you for my friends. Thank you for my friends, Spirit. Thank you for my friends. My wonderful, my wonderful, my wonderful friends. My wonderful, my wonderful, my wonderful friends. Yeah. Thank you. So very, very much. Hmm. Okay, please don't for, forget to sign the card for Rosie. She's had kind of a tough year, and uh, I think she'd really appreciate some good thoughts from all of us. Um, and we're gonna we're gonna know that, <laughs> that we're gonna let it be, and we're gonna let new things happen. Um, <laughs> love that poem. We, we may not have been ready for this stuff, but we've been ready by it, and so now it's time to move on. It's time to move on. So let's take a moment to close this portion out in prayer and uh, sign the card and stay after if you can. Help put a, a few uh, Christmas decorations back in the boxes. So I know that there is one power and presence that we call God. This power and presence is not an entity. It is the absolute intrinsic nature of all that is. So knowing that we can move forward this day, this year, understanding that we are loved beyond measure and that by that love, it radiates out through us to others. And anything that is unlike the intrinsic nature of God can no longer stand. And so we watch this new world, this new day, this new year, as it blooms into the flowers of our garden and we are filled with joy and with wonder of every ordinary miracle. Speak my word for anyone who is experiencing any kind of a challenge. And we know the power and presence of God is in the midst of that. 
making easy the way for perfect healing and wholeness. I release these words knowing that there is a power and presence that is responding as we speak. And we call it good and very good. And we let it be. And so it is. Thank you all. Shall we do our stand? bit horseshoey. <laughs> That's okay. So let there be peace. I am a stand for peace. Let there be love. I am a stand for love. Let there be joy. Let there be love. I am a spirit. 